action. Hi there. Welcome to Lance and Terry's abode. Hey, Wayne Atherholt recently did a really cool thing. He took you around his personal collection of art in his house and showed you how this stuff is collectible and it's not a TJ Maxx poster and all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna give you a tour of, of our house and our art collection. So, uh, but we'd like to inspire you to buy art from an artist and also inspire you to collect and uh, please show your collection. So anyway, these are from Linda Newcomb. They're called the Tricksters. Let's move along. Back here we have a Kevin Bourgeois. He's a New York artist. That top part is done in graphite pencil and he does very, very large pencil drawings that are just exquisite. And uh, down here, we have a Dan Meisner, and that's from my mom. That is a hand-painted China globe. And Terry had a piece that her grandmother had way back in the early 1900s. Um, this is one of my abstracts. Another Kevin Bourgeois that's uh, done, it's the death of cassette tapes. And the inside part is an old Roger Dean illustration, probably off a Yes album cover. In case of creative block, break glass, you notice it is not broken yet. Terry and I are still coming up with ideas. And over here we have some Jack Bright mixed media pieces. And over here we have a Marlis Lynn's Cox photograph. She does beautiful painted photography as well. That was done a long time ago. If you recognize the interior, that is the ballroom of the Vinoy when it was derelict. See the crumbling plaster? So sometimes you gotta break and enter for your art. So we'll start down the hallway. And over here we have the Dennis Gaston and Rocky Bridges hallway. Love their work. These guys are both around here. You can get a hold of them. David McCurdy his abstract all the dots on here are hand pounded in fact i'm sure on the back there's a number and he knows exactly how many they're on there i've never counted them we've got more uh rocky bridges and this is uh lisa glazer that does these exquisite 3d cartoons out of ceramic uh terry's cupcake Follow me into the bathroom. In here, we have some more Linda Newcombs and Margie Stewart, who passed a few years ago. We all miss Margie. Uh, some ridiculous shower curtain <laughs> that Terry, Terry bought. Out of, we, you can order these, believe it or not. Uh, one, of, one of my pieces. This is uh, Lloyd Jones, who worked this is Copper. And he did a lot of wonderful things that, out of mangroves, you know, mangrove inspired. His son is now carrying on the tradition. This is a Leslie Newman. She works in encaustic, which is oil paint and wax, which is pretty cool. Another one of my little palettes. And this piece is a fun piece. Uh, for a very short time, I worked out of the St. Petersburg Opera, and I did some work for them, and this was on one of their sets. Another Dennis Gaston. And this is Sa Salabudavang Sisalumsak, who does just beautiful work. Ceramic head and rough hewn wood found objects. That's a Carolina Clary uh, painted photograph. And this is one of mine called Looking for Cupid. Very heart oriented. She has her heart on her sleeve. The reflections in her glasses are hard. Her beauty mark is a heart. It's a dozen faded roses in the background, but she's still working it. She's not giving up yet.
into the kitchen. This is one of my mom's again, again on uh, ceramic or porcelain, and it's a painted. They have to fire them. They never look the way they're going to look. So it, it, it mixes the touch of a painter with the alchemy of ceramics. It's crazy. So if you're painting a pink flower, when you're painting it, it's not pink. It's some other color. God only knows. They're, they're, but they're pretty amazing. More Linda Newcomb. We seem, to, we seem to have a thing for Linda. Up top is Kevin Kenzel, who's an architect by trade. So you can see that influence in his work. Down below is a piece out of Bradley Arthur's Word Works. Uh, a series where he welds nails together and comes up with uh, a dominant image on the top and when the light is cast on it the shadow makes an ironic statement underneath so we have W and WMD back in the good old days when that's all we were worried about weapons of mass destruction here's a cocktail painting near the watering hole, some tomatoes, a little Ira Burhens piece, and up top is another one. Another cocktail. Down here we have Scott Estes, who was actually in Salt Creek Artworks before I was, by about two weeks. And I hope he's doing well. I haven't heard from him in years. Up top is a little painting. We have a nesting pair of Cooper's Hawks in our backyard. So they inspired me to do that, and a blue jay. Let's keep going. And we have a fish here. Oh, sorry, way. another Linda Newcomb, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> so in here we have some painted photographs. These are done with film and dark room, no Photoshop, sandwiching negatives together. Nobody cares, everybody does who's, it. Does who's it the Photoshop. artist? Oh, that would be me. So we, all this is, it was a black and white photograph, so all the color you see is painted. And out here, we have a Russ Gustafson Hilton next to one of my abstracts. So you can see how they speak to each other. A Darren Baciel, he was another Salt Creek Artworks artist. Another Russ Gustafson Hilton called Hammurabi's bedpan. Uh, back in the corner, I'm very honored to have that as a. <laughs> that was Larry. And the, good, good boy. Sit, Ubu, sit. Anyway, uh, that's a Lynn Neff stained glass piece. Larry, enough. Uh, that's. And it was the Friends of the Arts Award, which I was honored to have won back in the day. Up top is an oil painted palette that I turned into a sculptural piece with some Sculpey, which is awesome stuff if you're locked away with your kids or grandkids. Make some art. You can fire it in the oven for very easily and uh, sand it and paint it. Uh, over there is another of the original, one of my first photographs I ever did. Back on this side is a, another recent painting of a wave. It's mine. And the teapot over there is a Steve Olszewski. One mainsail best of show not too long ago. Or actually it was, everything's long ago. Anyway, Worker B, that painting's called Cross Pollination. Um, our, our personal pet wall, which, uh, Doberman is uh, Terry's dog, Diablo. And uh, the one below is Larry the Clown, who's been mouthing off here in the last few minutes. This is, um, this is kind of cool. An again, another Sculpey piece that I put on this, whatever you call these things, models for uh, drawing or whatever. So you can, you can, you can do that yourself. Um, Cyprian Harvey, S-Y-P-R-I-A-N, Harvey. I think he lives in Asheville now. Just powerful, powerful found objects, welded sculptures, and he does some pretty cool paintings as well. Uh, Grady Kenzie was the teacher of Salabudovan Sisalimsak, 
we saw earlier, and you can see the influences. My most recent painting called uh, The Farmer's Daughter. And uh, there was some comfort back in the day when we had been the early 60s or late 50s when everything was nuclear mutants causing monsters and sci-fi and, and uh, outer space and all American girls. Uh, back in the day, I'm somehow comforting. We got uh, Yasuko Nakamura over here. Sadly, she passed not too long ago. Beautiful ceramic pieces. That's also her on the bottom. And up top is a Stephen Kenny. Sometimes you can pair completely different styles together and make a stronger statement. Down here is Gil de Meza, found object sculpture. If you look at that disc on the bottom, you can recognize it as a plow blade off that you pull behind a tractor. Apparently that one hit a rock or something. Anyway, a cool found object. So the thing about, oh, sorry, over here is an artist. I picked him up in Chicago, and I really don't know much about him. He does big industrial size stuff, but uh, it's pretty, pretty cool stuff. I could have his name so we can see it. But um, his name is Myford, M-Y-F-O-R-D. I don't remember his first name. Anyway, the point is, uh, you know, the thing about collecting is, as Wayne did, every one of these little pieces has a story that you can tell. So when I was curating a gallery, I would space everything out a lot. You don't have to do that. When you're buying your work, you can jam it up as much as you want. Every one of those pieces has a story that'll be heartfelt and you'll remember the rest of your life. So uh, anything, if you see anything you like, a lot of this stuff's for sale, so get in touch with me. We'll figure out a way to get it to you safely. And uh, you know, the arts are the first thing to get hit and one of the last things to recover, especially individual artists. So if you can see your way clear to make a purchase from an artist before Christmas or birthdays or just, just for a new experience, uh, don't hesitate to get in touch with one of them. And I challenge you collectors out there to show, do what we just did and show your collection because I'm sure you'd like to tell some stories about yours as well and artists as well. So uh, anyway, thank you for listening. Hope I didn't talk your ear off. Buy art, damn it. <laughs>